Hello and welcome to this short tutorial, this time focusing on the preterite tense, one of the past time frame tenses. So to start us off with, just a little bit of recap from what we covered last time in the present tense. If you haven't watched the present tense video, I would suggest you watch it before watching this video as it covers a lot of fundamentals that we're going to build on today in this tutorial. So what I would suggest you do now is just recap over the key terms that we use when we're talking about conjugation. So pause the video here for two seconds while you do that. So subject pronouns. Subject pronouns, remember, are pronouns that replace people who are doing the actions. These are the subject pronouns I, you, he, she, it, we, you, plural, and they. Like we said last time, the personal pronouns and all of our conjugation enders in every single tense that we're going to learn in Spanish are laid out in a certain specific order. That order is I, you, he, she, it, we, you, plural, they, and we call that order the paradigm. So that is the order in which the personal pronouns and the endings are written out and laid out in Spanish. We said that a verb was an action or a state. So that could be, for instance, I play, it could be I played, or it could be I am. Now, we said that if we go to a dictionary and we look up I played, the Spanish that we're going to get is not going to be I played, it's going to give us the verb to play. And we said that that two form of the verb, the most basic form that ends in AR, ER or IR, is known as the infinitive. Building on from that, we said conjugation was the process of changing the infinitive, removing the AR, the ER, the IR, and didn't leave our stem. And it was the process of changing the infinitive to show who does the action. So rather than saying Jamie to play football, we would say Jamie plays football. That process of changing the verb is conjugation. Now we said that if we remove the AR, the ER, the IR from our verbs, we get what we know as our stem. And the stem is the building blocks to which we then add our endings. In our endings, our endings show who does, did or will do an action. And they also show us what tense it happened in. So whether it was in the preterite, the imperfect, the present, the future. And again, just a remind the paradigm is the set order in which our endings and our personal pronouns are arranged in all languages. We've got the English order of the personal pronouns on the left-hand side in the blue there. So we've got I, you, he, she, it, we, you, plural, they. And then on the right-hand side in the red, you've got the Spanish equivalent. Yo, tú, el, ella, nosotros, vosotros, ellos, ellas. And a reminder for the nosotros, the we form, and the vosotros, the you, plural form, there's a distinct ending for groups of females. And that order, like it says at the bottom, never ever changes. Now, having covered the basics again, so just how the paradigm works, the process of conjugation, let's launch into our definition for a day and our explanation for a day, which is the preterite tense. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, the preterite tense is one of the past time frames, and it's used specifically to talk about completed actions in the past. And what I would be looking out for when you want to use it is if you're looking to say the likes of I travelled, I ate, I lived. I always explain to my classes that if you travelled somewhere, you weren't travelling, you actually got there. It's completed. The same if you ate a cake. The difference between I was eating a cake and I ate a cake. If you ate a cake, the cake's in your belly. It's been digested. Whereas if you were eating a cake, you're talking about that process of, being eat, of eating. So it's talking about completed actions in the past. They've got a definite start and they've got a definite end. They've come to that end point. So, how to form it? As always, we take our infinitive of the verb first. So we've got uh, viajar, comer, vivir. And we remove our infinitive ending and that leaves us with our stem. So we're working with the same stem as we were working with with the present tense. So viaj for viajar, com from comer, and vivir from vivir. And we add our correct end into the stem, and it's based on, again, if the verb is an ER, ER, or IR verb, and who is doing the action. Now, this time, there's two sets of regular endings. We start with the ER verbs. We've got E, ASTE, O, AMOS, ASTEIS, ARON. Your ER and your IR verb endings for regular verbs are the same. So there's one set for ER, and they also are the same for IR. They are E, Iste, yo, imos, isteis, and ieron. Now, some people struggle to remember this. 
um, and struggle to remember the A and the E for the first person, for the I form. A little trick if you're struggling to remember it, and but if you then get it and remember the rest of it, think of the word preterite. Now, in preterite, there's two different vowels. You've got your E and you've got your I. Your E, funnily enough, if we look at our ER verbs, pop an accent on it, that's your end for ER verbs. The other vowel, the I, funnily enough, if we pop an accent on that, that's our ER and our IR verb ending for the first person for the I form. So if you get stuck on remembering what the I form is, just think of the word preterite and think of your two vowels, your E for your ER verbs and your I for your ER and your IR verbs. Now, those are for regular verbs. And there's one little thing that you've got to be aware of, that there is a spelling change that does occur and it's due to sound. If we take the example of discard guard, I'm just going to write this. Just if I follow the normal process, I remove my ER, I get discard. There's my stem. And if I'm going to add my right ending on, it's an ER verb. So I'm going to be looking in this column just here. And it's the I form. So I need that E on the end. So if I put that discard and just put an E on the end, I would actually get the sound discard G. So we don't want that G. We need to preserve the sound discard G. So to do that, what we have is we have the spelling change that is below. So to keep that G sound, we add a U to the mix. So you get discard G as detailed below. So do just be aware of that. That happens with descargar. It also happens with jugar. So again, if we get jugar, we remove the AR to get our stem, hug. If I add just the E at the end of it, I'll get hug. We don't want that. So we must add the U to buffer that sound and to get that hug. So do be aware of that. That's for your regular verbs. So we'll go through our example. She traveled. We're going to start with the verb viajar. First step, I remove my ER to leave my stem, so I get viaj. And I'm looking for she, so I'm going to go for the she form. And I know viajar is an ER verb. So I'm going to use this column here, ER. And I'm going for the he, she form. So I get viajo. Now, really, really important is that you put the accent on. The reason why you need to put the accent on the reason why you must put the accent on is as follows. If you have viajo or viajo without the accent, you get I travel in the present tense. Whereas if you put the accent on, the O, that's what turns it into he, she, or it, and traveled. So just by adding that accent, you're changing who's doing the action, you're changing the person, the verb to the third person, to the he, she, it form, and you're also moving it into the past time frame, into the prayer tense. So for this tense, I would strongly advise that you learn the accents where they fall. And there's not many of them, it's only on the I form and on the he, she, it form of your regular verbs. But if you get these wrong in the exam, but as we've seen, you get a clash of forms so you can confuse the present tense for the pre tense and vice versa. And if you do the likes of AQA Spanish, that will cause you a, a major error and it would lose your marks in the writing exams. So do be 100% aware of that. Okay, so now we've been through the explanation. What you have got is uh, you've got the numbers 1 to 11 and you have got some sentences or some phrases in English. Next the phrase, you have got the infinitive next to it that you need to use. I would like you to conjugate that infinitive to start using that preterite tense. Pause the video here while you do this. Okay, let's go through. So the first one, he ate. So we've got our infinitive comer. And again, like last time, I'm gonna work through this with you. So we take our infinitive, we find our stem by removing the A-R-E-R-I-R, which is com. I'm gonna add the right ending, which is comio, for he, she, or it, it. And again, remember, you must have that accent on the end. We visited, we're going to take our infinitive, infinitive, visitar. We're going to remove our A-R-E-R-I-R to leave us with our stem. So 
we have Bizit and we visited, we're going to add Amos to the end. Now the eagle eyed of you might clock that this is the same as the present tense and it is, you've done it right. So just be aware of that. You singular lived, take your infinitive, BB, remove the IR and for you singular, we get BB stay. Nuria and I danced, so we're going to ask ourselves, Nuria and I, what can we replace it with? We can replace it with the pronoun, we. So we're going to go for the we form. So we're going to go for by lad. Get for our stem by removing that our AR to get by L. And we said we're going to use the we form, so we get by lamos. You plural shared. Compartir. Remove the IR to get compart. So a stem, and then we're going to add the right engine, which is compact these days. She won, we've got ganar, remove your AR to get your stem, so you get gan, and this is the one again, where you've got to be incredibly careful with that accent, if not, gano is going to be I win in the present tense, and we want she won, so it's gano with the accent. Billboard. We're going to substitute Bill with he. So we're going to go to our stem first to comp. And compro. Again, another one where if you miss that accent, you're going to get that clash. And another one with a clash, escribir. To write, get our stem, escribe. And for he, she, it, escribio. They listened. Escuchar. To get our stem, remove that ear. Escuch. And we add that R on to the end. They. They listened. And the last one they downloaded. Descargar. Get our uh, stem. Descarg. Now this time. Because we've got that A there. That G preserves itself. So we don't need to worry about inserting a U. The only time you have to insert the U, if you've got a G or an E, or a G or an I together, that's when you have to insert the U to keep those sounds separate. If you haven't got that, if you've got a G and an A, it's fine. You can leave that be. Now, as with all tenses, there are irregulars. With the preterite tense, I like to think that there has been two types of key irregular verbs. There's more than two types of irregular verbs. There's lots of irregular verbs in the preterite tense, and... These are the ones that I think that you should know and probably commit to memory. The others, you kind of meet them as you go along. So these first type, the type one, as I call them, are ones that you need to learn by heart inside out because there's no real, there's no real rule with which you can learn them. The ones that do go together are said and ir. If you look at said and ir together, you've got fui, fui stay fue, fui must stays fuera on they're actually exactly the same so i would learn them two together so i was as exactly the same as i went then we've got dar to give and ber to see and these ones are quite similar too so i would learn these as a pair as well so if you see dar you've got i gave and di diste dio and the same with ber you've got bi biste bio so they're very very similar and lastly hacer Hacer has got that spelling change in the middle of it, the ether. So just be aware of that as well. So these ones you need to learn by heart. Note though, with the irregulars, there's no accents on them, so you don't need to you don't need to learn the accents. Type two are a little bit different. Um, type two all have the same endings, which are in the blue box just there. So you can learn those as a set of endings. With the type two, however, where they're irregular is that they have an irregular stem. 
So andar, we would normally, if we were doing the preterotense, remove the ending to get our stem and we would add our ending to the end of it. So we would get ande. It's not the case. What you've actually got is you've got an irregular stem. So your actual stem, when you're forming the preterotense, you start with andub and then you add the relevant ending. So you've got andar, your stem is andub, caber goes to coop, estar, estub, haber, ub, poder, pud, poner, pus, querer, quis, saber, sub, tener, tub, venir, bin. So an example would be they wanted. So the verb to want is querer. And I can say that my regular stem for querer is quis. So I'm going to start with my stem, quis. And to that, I need to add this set of endings. And it's the they ending that I want. So I'll go with the sixth one down, quisieron. And I'm going to add that ieron to the end. So I get, for they wanted, quisieron. So, to have a go at that now, you have got some sentences on the slide in front of you. You've got the English translation first, and then you've got the bolded Spanish translation. You've got two options in purple, and your job now is to choose which form of the verb is correct. Some of them are irregular, some of them are regular. Pause the video here while you do this. Let's go through. So for the first one, yesterday I walked. We've got ayer, we've got ande or andube. So I walked, we said andar has got the irregular stem, andub. So it's going to be that second option that is correct. Last weekend I bought a car, comprar is regular. So we're going to use that first one, compré. Compró, without the accent, that is the present tense. So that would be wrong. Last week I went to Spain. La semana pasada, ie o fui a España. And we said that ir goes to fui in the preterite tense. I wanted to buy an ice cream, another irregular stem. It's going to be quise. He did his homework. Again, he did is irregular. It's hizo. Sus deberes. They travel by coach. Viajar is regular. However, viajan. This is the present tense, and we want they traveled in the preterite tense. So we're going to go for viajaron. It was cool, and again, the verb to be is irregular. Fue guay. You plural set the table. Now, this one I've just realized as I'm reading it sounds like it could be present. You set the table. I'm looking at it as the past, okay? And Poner in the past goes to pus, so we've got pusis test, la mesa. I downloaded a song, it's going to be that second option. Again, if we have that first option, we'll get descarge, it's that sound change, that spelling change. And the last one, we go by aeroplane. This one's a sneaky one, go is the present tense. So I'm going to use vamos. So finally, to finish this little tutorial on the preterite tense, You've got some blanks on the screen in front of you. What I would like you to do is just fill out the blanks, pause the video here while you do this. So let's go through. So the preterite tense, we're using completed actions. In the past, such as I traveled, I ate, and I lived. That's the translation we're looking for. We first take our infinitive, so be viajar, comer, vivir. So the two form of the verb. We remove our infinitive ending and that leaves us with our stem. And then we add the correct ending. Of to the stem based on if the verb is an er, er, or an ir verb, and who is doing that action. And our endings this time are e, that e with an accent on. Aste, o with an accent, amos, hasteis, aron. That's for our prior tense, for our er verbs. For our er and for our ia, er and ia, i, iste, io, 
emos y stays y eran and again just remind it those accents are really really important so if we go for our example she traveled our infinitive is via har we remove our infinitive ending and that leaves us with our stem biach and the right ending we know that viajar is an AR verb, so we're looking at this column. We know that it's he, she, it, so we're looking along here. So it's going to be viajo with our accent on the end. And there you have it.